Hey, Ms. Bahawk here, and this is a really important video because if you've ever watched a movie where it sounds great for a second and then all of a sudden the sound effects start happening and it's just so much louder that you have to use your remote to turn it down and then when people start talking, you have to turn it back up and the sound just feels all over the place. And then let's just say it just cuts to commercial break, for example. Then the commercial is not the same sound level as what you were just listening to. So it can be a very disruptive experience if audio is mainly what you have to go off of, which is podcasting for the most part. You can have the video component, of course, but let's say for your audio listeners, for that experience, if you've got one speaker whose sound is just on point and then you have another speaker who sounds way, way, way lower, whether it's the microphone, how far they were away from it, whatever it might be. If you don't edit that in post-production, that is a bit of a disruptive experience. You can get by when you're first starting out, but at some point you want to be able to figure out how to normalize this. And I'm going to show you how to do that in this video super, super quick. It's not always perfect, but it works 90% of the time. And I'll show you how you can kind of play it by ear if this feature doesn't work on its own. So basically we've got Adobe Audition open over here. I'm going to drag and drop a podcast that I had already edited for a client of mine. We've got two tracks, speaker one, speaker two here. Once they're both in this area, I'm going to hit multi-track. I'm going to label this test three. Okay. Just hit enter. And then we're going to bring each speaker to their own track. Okay. So speaker one and speaker two, just by looking when you kind of zoom in and out here, you can see the waveforms here, right? You see how this looks and how this looks, how tall the waves kind of are. Anytime you highlight a track, you're going to start, let's say with the top one, this essential sound area opens up. You're going to hit dialogue. And then the first thing you open up is loudness. Okay. And this right here, if you hit auto match, okay, it's basically going to measure the existing clip loudness, and then it's going to format it to a normal listening level, which is about negative 23 LFUs. And LFU stands for loudness units relative to full scale, okay? To read you kind of the description I found here on Google, it's a standardized measurement of audio loudness that factors human perception and electrical signal intensity together. Basically, they're used to set targets for audio normalization in broadcast systems for cinema, TV, radio, and music streaming. So as you can see, negative 23 is kind of the normal level and if you start to actually play this top track now at the bottom you have this sound monitor what's up guys welcome to another edition of free flow friday you're gonna see that it perfectly goes up to about negative six negative three but it doesn't really surpass that at its peak, right? It doesn't go into the red line. Now, when we look at and measure the sound level for speaker two, standards. see how and low it is? Same thing for football, it wasn't an overly large. It's kind of at negative 30 or so, and then when Bryce says something, his is all the way up here. So for speaker two, I'm gonna make sure to highlight that track, hit dialogue, again, loudness, hit auto match. It's gonna do its thing. And then I want you to kind of hear the difference here if you can. Didn't, uh, <laughs> see how his voice is just way louder and sounds a lot more fuller now? You can even see the waveform, it's kind of become much, much taller, almost a lot taller than Bryce's up top over here. Not a bad thing, as you do want to give it a double check when you have headphones on and listen to it and make sure that you know, it sounds fairly balanced. Something you want to keep in mind, because this feature does most of the work right there, right? It balances out the speaking segments. So even if you record it in a couple different sessions or whatever, you're able to keep it pretty consistent. But let's say that you add some background noise removal and you add some de-hum and there's some echoes. So we're gonna do some reverb over here, right? And then once you do that, now when you hit play. Carried on. Um, like I said, uh, see how it dulled the sound a little bit like it did bring down, you know, even though it says it the original is negative 23 LUFS, even though it's at the standard volume for listening originally, when we've added all of these different effects, it's kind of affected it. So let's just say you come down to clip volume over here and we go plus 0.5. Uh, I was never the most physically talented. Okay. I want to go louder. I can go plus 2.1. Um, and you just kind of want to watch these the sound monitor at the bottom here to see how high it's, it's going. Really 
at okay, some of its peak, does it go into the red zone? Okay. Because if it does, yeah, maybe it's a little too much. If it's in the green or yellow, then you're pretty good. So this is a manual way for you to adjust it, especially when you add music. Let's say I added a song into track three here. If I have music playing over this, I wanna make sure that my speakers are speaking at a normalized volume that everybody can hear. So making sure you do that for each track is really all you have to do. Hit the auto match button and it does the trick. Give it another sound check and if if needed, you can basically manually adjust the clip volume and that should take care of it for you. Let me know if you have any questions at all on this. Drop a comment. I'd love to hear from you. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and check out some of these over here or save them for later. I think you'll enjoy them too. But thanks for hanging out and I'll see you next time.